for this. Uh, everything has been said about my next guest over and over and over. Uh, she's the only person I know named Judy Garland. Here she is. You sure you know who I am? <laughs> Why do you think I kissed you twice? Yes, and thank you for the flowers. That's all right. You gave them to me. <laughs> you gave me a whole bunch of them, actually. I just That's gave right. two of them back. Yes, I cut those this morning from my little window box. And you did? Read them in. Did you grow? How nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I'm a great fan of yours. I can't understand that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you all about it. It's because, no, come on, you, know you what it can't is, though. understand it. Well, Don't be ridiculous. Uh, there are certain people in the industry who are uh, so big, as we say, that you can't imagine them watching you. I mean, um, I can't imagine you or Bob Hope uh, sitting in front of a TV screen and seeing I me. Can't and I can't imagine Bob that... Hope watching you because they'd probably be <laughs> jealous of your humor. Oh, undoubtedly. But, but yes. I can imagine everybody else. Yeah, he's uh, very jealous of me. He keeps having to go to Vietnam to get well, away from the pressure. Well, he creates wars. <laughs> when there isn't a war, just to get away from the house, maybe. <laughs> Bob goes, you know, and, and does a show, and all of a sudden there's a war. Yeah. And there wasn't the one there before. I hadn't noticed that it was in that order, but it's an interesting theory. <laughs> well, you know, your fans sometimes are so enthusiastic that when one goes to see you... One fan? Or? No, when one... <laughs> when, when I'm glad a, I've got one left. When a person goes to see you. Uh, it's almost hard to hear you sometimes because your fans just won't let you finish a song. They That's because roaring. they sing better than I do. <laughs> is that what it is? Now, do you mean, what do, do, what do you mean, Dick? I don't know. What, what, I just, what, what are we talking about now? I, I was thinking... Why don't we go back to, to Bob Hope and all that? All right. Uh, or the flowers, and I'll come on again. <laughs> that was the best entrance anyone has, uh, has made on the show. We, yeah, that was, you should have seen me dressing upstairs, upstairs. Problem? It was, did you ever hear of a man named Owen McGivney? No, you're much too young. Everybody's much too young. <laughs> Even you're much too young. Owen, Owen McGivney was, did nothing but change clothes. He didn't, he wasn't witty or anything. He was in vaudeville. That was his and he thing? just, you know, would come on in one outfit and run off in the wings and come out in a whole new outfit in two seconds. And everybody thought it was pretty good. And I was... Like Owen McGivney, upstairs. Gee. I had odd and very strange, but I don't mean strange, nice people, but strangers working yes. on my hair and uh, makeup. And if I came out looking well, it's simply because of my good spirit. <laughs> I, I don't think I could have said that better myself. I'm no but, kidding. Yeah. I don't think Strange I Strange people do, do uh, handle you when you're on a show like this. It's an odd feeling to go from studio to studio, especially for a lady. And suddenly all these people descend on you and they start and they, doing they, things. And, and you haven't met them and there isn't time to, to, to get acquainted, you know, and sort of mm -hmm. say... Well, it's nice to see you again because first place you haven't seen them before, and and all all so they say is is all right. Come on, you're on in four seconds, and you've just gotten into the studio, and you don't know who you're working yes. with or what songs are going to be on, but you bloody well do it, and I don't know why. <laughs> really, are you beginning to question the reason for all this foo for all after you all mean these showbiz? Showbiz, yeah. The biz. The biz. I think it's hideous. 
Except for the audiences. Uh -huh. I like them, but I don't like all the, uh, uh, well... Junk you know, that goes with the it. The bloodstained runners that <laughs> separate the artists from the audience. Well, you know about that. You all know about that. Maybe you're out there. I don't know. <laughs> I you know about it. I have wonder myself. Listen, when we come back, I have, uh, you can stay Where a while, can't you? Where are we going? <laughs> Damn good question, because I always say we're going away, but we don't. We stay right here. Oh? Well, let's see if we go away when I snap my fingers. <laughs> the queen of the comeback. Sure. I'm getting tired of coming back. I really am. I can't even go into a restaurant and have to go to the powder room without making a comeback when I... <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll make another one about six minutes from now, too, because we'll have another break then and we'll have another comeback. Yeah. And we'll go away and not have been anywhere. I haven't had a good break for a long time. <laughs> Do you have coffee breaks? Coffee breaks? Do you yeah. stretch them with juicy fruit? <laughs> we stretch them with anything we can get. <laughs> I have some... Uh, How does it feel to be a legend? <laughs> At this moment, rotten. No, I mean, I, you're well, level I'm, with me. I'm so seldom asked. Well, but I know, but people are so afraid of you. They don't, you know, they don't dare... They're in. How does it feel to be a living... Statue of Liberty. It's very, very gratifying. Well, and I find that when a kid like yourself comes along and shows a little promise, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be able to give you a break. Oh, and, I, see. And, uh, I know that a lot of important people are watching this show. Oh, I, <laughs> so. I, I can I throw up from this. Oh, yeah. No, I've got my black dress on. <laughs> I brought my hat just in case anything like that might happen. Oh. What else have you got to say for yourself? You started something about a coffee break. See, I have some. I never offer my guests my coffee and my, uh, I have some extra little New York tap water here. Rose or your glove. ba 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 And they said we couldn't get her to sing on the show. That's it. It. It's all we can afford. <laughs> so I don't know what those curtains after the television series I did, which unfortunately is buried somewhere in Newark. Is it? Why? I don't know. All oh, 26 shows. We didn't have those kind of classy curtains. And so you've got a little more money than we all think. Well, listen, those curtains are going to be available shortly. Well, I Hey. We're gonna, well, they're marked down because we're closing out in a month. Well, when are you coming back? Uh, to, not to bring up... Well, I've made so many comebacks that uh, I just... <laughs> don't really know. Copycat. I know, I took your material. Uh, do, do unknown songwriters, they must come to you with manuscripts clutched under their arms and in their sweaty palms. And, unknown uh, songwriters? Unknown songwriters, and, and want you to do their numbers all the time. They must, must have gone on for years and years. What do you do about that? Well, first of all, uh, well, everyone who sings uh, has people send them songs, you know, that they write. Mm -hmm. uh, songwriters. First thing you do is make sure that you send them back after you read them over to see if they, because you, they'll sue the dickens out of you if you don't get them back. Yes. However, I've got to tell you, there was one marvelous man called Peter A. Follow, F-O-L-L-O. Follow. Uh, follow. And he was rather rich, evidently, because he sent me, this was years ago, just after we had lost the war completely, and Pearl Harbor was just bombed out and we were you know desperate in 41 this was i don't remember either that or the or the civil war when i was born but anyway peter a follow 
sent me a group of his amateur songs, but then it was leather bound and beautifully copied, and they were just terrible, terrible, terrible songs. Oh, they were. They were the worst songs. So I had to keep them, even if he sued me. He wrote one song. Now, mind you, you know, we would all. Uh, Pearl Harbor. Well, they weren't kidding, you know. And. And then I think, was it Mr. Kaiser and Hildegard had to get a lot of ships built quickly uh, so that we could <laughs> defend ourselves. In the meantime, Peter Ray Follow sent me these songs. And the first one was called, it was kind of a peppy song called You Lousy Jippy Jippy Japs. <laughs> and, and I'm sure he meant it well, but it was kind of a... A frisky little yeah, number. Frisky. I think it was Japanese. Poking fun at our yellow enemies. <laughs> no, or no, at us. Well, that was the way they talked during the war. You remember the posters that showed the Japanese as rats with glasses no. and teeth? I remember that. That was clearly. Peter. A hey, follow. Was it, was it? <laughs> you lousy Jiffy Jiffy. I hate you so much. I'll make you know that. Just wait and see. You're Jippy Jabs, you lousy big rats. That's the most I can remember. Of it. <laughs> it didn't turn you don't remember when that was on the hit parade? <laughs> in, no, that's in, really in, a terrible in, song, isn't it? it? it well, it didn't inspire. Mr. Too much. Follow had, uh, yes, Mr. Follow was an enemy, obviously. Little, yeah. But he, he also wrote a, a song for everybody to join the uh, mobilization uh -huh. song. And it, uh, he didn't like rhyming. He wrote words and lyrics, and it went... Uncle Sam is going to build an army. Uncle Sam is going to build a navy. And if you dare to come upon our shores, if you do, we'll punch you on your jaws. We are going to certainly surprise you and we'll knock you out. Talking. Um, <laughs> talking you were in GM in the great, what they always call the great day of GM, and business is full of stories about Louis B. Mayer, who was a dominating figure in those days. Well, he was but a he, dominating figure. Yeah. He was a very good movie maker. Uh, he was a, well, he did make good movies. I don't know what happened. I and all of that. But Mr. Mayor was, uh, he was always really quite, quite nice. Very stern, very nice to me. Except that he, <laughs> can I tell a terrible story? Tell a terrible story? <laughs> this is the place. <laughs> there, there was a, there was a, a, a just such an uh, anxious producer by the name of Harry Rapf. R-A-P-F. Rapf? Yes. <laughs> Which made you stop and think, anyway. And I was—I had only been at Metro for about six months, and they didn't know what to do with me because I was at that rotten age. If I had to be two or eighteen, there was no in between, you know. And so I just went to school a lot, but uh, and didn't learn a thing, by the way, except one day. Uh, so. Oh, into a private dining room at MCM. And there were just a lot of men, you know, eating and congratulating Mr. Mayor on the food from the commissary. <laughs> they obviously wanted to stay in good with Mr. Mayor. Meantime, I was too... As if he cooked it himself. <laughs> what? As if he cooked it himself, among other things. Yeah. He did. He did know. <laughs> That's not the end of the story, is it? Oh, no. If you want it to be. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I'll shut up. No, no, no. So all these men are in there. No, there were no, there were about seven men in there, and they were all trying to sort of get in, stay in good, or stay with Mr. Mayor. And I didn't. I was I was twelve or thirteen, and I was always just given chicken broth. Uh, with not a noodle in it, because I had baby fat. Now, everybody can have baby fat. That's not necessarily a, you know, a criminal offense. But in my case, no matter what I ordered, I, you know, I'd get this rotten chicken. And, I didn't want to, and even in Mr. Mayor's... Uh, uh, private dining room. Private dining room. Well, Harry Rapp was sitting here... And he, he, he had the most astounding nose because it was very aquiline, but it went way over to the desk. And, and came back again. <laughs> and kept getting in my soup. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody quite knew to my... And they, and they were all eating like mad. These uh, gentlemen, you know, so here, have, have some of this and that, and bypassing me as I sort of try to get, well, anyway. Harry Rapp was perspiring. I suppose he was going to be fired or something. And the apple pie came on, and my eyes bugged out, and uh, and they all just were eating. And I thought, what am I doing here? You know, I haven't even been in a movie, and nobody's paying any attention to me. And, uh, Harry Rapp finally broke this silence by saying, with a mouthful of apple pie, uh, my goodness, Mr. Mayor, this is the best piece of apple pie I've ever had in my whole mouth. He <laughs> <laughs> was so nervous. He meant to say my whole life. I laughed and was immediately, I was never asked back. <laughs> That's a great story. Yes, yes. But, uh, uh, my whole mouth. <laughs> we have, uh, you know Lee Marvin, don't you? Yes, I do. He'll be here in a minute, and maybe between us we'll coax you to sing. But I don't want to say that, because I know we weren't supposed to. We'll be back after this message. We're having our countdown, and you counted backwards. Well, that's what comes from ignorance. Do you suppose, do you suppose that between um, Mr. Marvin, Madam Kaminsky, Larry Hankin, and Mike, Probing, we would get you and urge you to sing something for us. I know that is nice to put it that way. Hmm. Even if I think I, I think I probably would have died if you hadn't asked. Me. <laughs> How did you get that mic in your pocket? I, someone handed <laughs> it to me, and I, with my eyesight, we I did, come back. Oh dear heavens! Now, this is a, a, a... Do you really want me to... Well, of course you want Yeah, to say obviously that. the audience doesn't want you to, but we do. That you burst of applause you, was... Yes, you do. Oh, wait, no, don't do it again. Yes. We know. There's a, there, it's a new song, which is a, an innovation for me, because mm -hmm. I've been singing Cavalcade for years. But there's a, there's a marvelous songwriter by the name of, of Johnny Myers who wrote... Uh, I think a, a lovely song. We might as well, I might as well crack my way through it if it's all right. Give it a crack. Okay. <laughs> Let me make only 
tiny mistake. And that he'll love me and God. If you do, I promise I'll have a sky mother sing. <laughs> 